Hello and welcome to Ukulo TV. Today is Saturday, March 23rd, and once again we have James Charles channeling for us. Jim, would you like to introduce the people in your room? Of course. I have Angie and Barb, Jack and Ray. So. And in the webinar online, we have Catelyn, Christine, Don, Lucia, Michelle, Michelle, Reinhard, Shear, Stephanie, and myself, Mark. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let's see, we have a few announcements today. Um, August 8th through 12th will be the Rochester Hukula Workshop. Uh, June 21st to 23rd is the Heart and Solstice uh, Gathering in Canada. Angie, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, it's, uh, Actually, have Lucia tell us about it. Okay. Lucia, can you tell us a little bit of the, about the Heart and Solstice? Yes, hello. Um, yes, it's... Um, it's going to be a weekend, a power healing weekend, where uh, galactic energy healing will be taught on site. Um, there's going to be daily channeling, some yoga, raw food, and it uh, should be a really nice gathering. Um, for now, actually, it, we're almost sold out. Um, it's happening in Ontario, near Ottawa. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of interest for this uh, galactic energy healing. And I'm part of a group there where we, we do um, weekly meditations and I've shared many of, of, well, of what I've, ta I've been taught by Takur and I've, I've um, uh, even last Thursday, uh, I did a healing. It was a, where the group was, was present and um, the person on the table was a little bit skeptical and at the end she said, I'm signing up. And excellent, thank you. And it will be a three-day experience, uh, the 21st, the 22nd, and 23rd, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And there will be all kinds of things. I'll be doing private readings there. I'll be doing um, uh, teaching there with Takur, of course. And it will be a lot of fun, I'm sure. There will be a lot of variations there. So it will be fun. Yes, we're really looking forward to it. Um, actually, everyone I've spoken to is extremely excited and um, yes, it's the beginning of something new. It's the spreading of the uh, galactic energy healing. So yes, it's uh, yeah. it's starting to take off, and that's a beautiful thing. It's very powerful, and it has a lot of benefits. So it's it's a wonderful thing. Yes, thank you for participating, Jim. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, and Jim, did you describe the April May galactic healing? Okay, I'm trying to get together a galactic healing class for, for those that will not be joining us in Canada or at the workshop. But uh, for those that want to still learn galactic energy healing, there are those of you that ex have expressed some interests, but I want to see how many people are interested so I can put a class together either at the end of April or the beginning of May. So if you are interested in that class, please let me know because I want to see what the interest level is, how many people are, would, would like to, to do it. I have like three people that have asked about it. So I, I need a, at least about 10 people to do the class and so it would, won't be too expensive. But please let me know if you are interested. It will be on a Saturday and a Sunday and we'll figure out the times depending on where the people are that are asking. If, it, if you're in Australia, New Zealand and that, uh, kind of area, Japan. We'll do it uh, later in the day, so you can do it in the morning. If if we don't have any interest on the other side of the world, there, then we'll do it a little earlier, like from two to two to uh, five or whatever. We'll we'll see what happens. How do they contact you? Just contact me by my email. Most of you know it, Jim Reiki at gmail dot com. Contact me at Jim Reiki, R E I K I, at gmail.com. All right, very good. Anything else? Oh, we need to do blessings and we need to find out who you want me to channel today. Well, in the chats, <clears throat> I see a request for Mer Merline and one of the saints that were with Jesus during his lifetime. And uh, in the YouTube chat, we have a request uh, 
to revisit one of the uh, hybrid children we talked to many years ago. Ah, which one? Uh, they they said any of uh, any of the hybrid children we talked okay. to three or four years ago uh, to see what they're up to today. Since they grow a little faster than we do, uh, they might be doing some really interesting things by now. Uh, got a request for a seventh dimensional being. Okay. That would be nice. I like that one. Yes. Um, all right. Let's see. Is that it for requests? Did I miss anybody? Anybody else? For a seventh dimensional being? Or, I mean, requests for anybody to channel? Oh, no, I, the I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Go the ahead, Christine. Father talks about healing. Who? The El Yaha. Oh, El Yaha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And in the chat, I see requests from Uriel and uh, for Uriel and Alma Talk. Oh, that's Alma Talk. We haven't talked to him for quite a while, but uh, he's still around and he's still doing a lot of interesting work. So let's see who is uh, going to come today. Anybody else before we start? Oh, wait a minute. We have to do some blessings. Yes. Who would like to volunteer for blessings? Or you can still be telling me if, who you want. Uh, Barbara will do a blessing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And any more requests as well? Anybody else want to do a blessing? Anyone online, online want to do a blessing? All right, I'll do one, Lucia. Lucia, very good, thank you. Who's going first, Mark? Uh, why don't we let Barbara go first since she's getting in position? Okay, very good. Hold on. Yata kisi yata no kokshua patiana. Yata kisi yata komani kashi yata kua. Yamata yata kua ta pati. As we travel through endless space, making many discoveries and great uh, gathering information, we are here to let you know that we are actually not in coming to your world, but that we wish you the best in as many ways as possible. We wish that you would uh, move forward so that we may be more intrigued with your species and more intrigued with what is happening with you. Right now, everything is intellectual. It is factual and static. We are moving forward, but we will keep you in mind. Okay. Lucia? Alla stessa sono mini kirishi si. O koshi sini kakola sa nominiki. A koshi sini mini kala kasha soli kiso koti pili kiso konama. A koshi sini kasoli kesha sakala shu. Namaste. The light continues to grow. The light continues to spread. Let it become part of all of your existence from morning till night. For we know that your people need this light so desperately to move forward. We love you and we are praying that you are sustained by the love and the understandings that you are learning at this time. And Angie wants to do one. Okay. Waam ostua ia okua metutist ania nunua Bak adi tishi mininiku a patati shamo ai atakuku tatask aniyadana. There are always challenges, but you will overcome them as you grow in the light and love and understanding of what must be done. Of course, there will be times when you will be challenged, but you will succeed. You will triumph. That's encouraging. 
Uh, we also have a blessing uh, from uh, Suriname or, uh, in the chat, and I'm, I'll try and see if I can do this without mangling it. Your world is alive and growing. Keep the faith. We are with you. We are sending energy to you, and we will be with you after your contacts, your first contacts are done. All right. I think that covers blessings. Okay. Um, shall we see who comes through? Very well. I will be doing a meditation now, and um, everybody uh, think positive thoughts, and I would like to... Uh, bring in a very pure a pure uh, uh, message so please purify yourselves as well thank you This is Yorio. Hello and welcome. Greetings. My message for you today is that all the angels are watching over the earth at this time. We are giving aspects to many of you so that you can grow and be stronger in your missions. Because we've given aspects to many, we see that the light is a little stronger. But some are stuck in their uh, forward movement because they do not know what their missions entail completely. They do not know all their spiritual gifts. And so we are here to help you with those. Call on us. We know that many of you have the gift of healing. We know that many of you have the gift of empathy, which is feeling that which others are feeling it and helping them with some guidance or just taking that energy that is negative away from them and giving it back to Mother Earth. We know that some of you have uh, psychic gifts such as channeling or the chair or intuition when you're doing work and you know exactly what's happening with others and you are able to help them along or know exactly what part of them needs healed that they did not mention. Use these gifts wisely. Do not let them pass without using them because as you use them, they get stronger. As you use your gifts, they get greater and become more interesting to you and more interesting in the world and more powerful. If you ignore them, if you do not use them, they will slowly dissipate. They will slowly go away. So you need to be using your gifts. And those of you that say, I have no one to heal, heal Mother Earth, heal the universe, heal all the places, the people that were uh, had lost their families uh, in New Zealand, pray for the Middle East. Pray for all the different areas that have great turmoil. So you do have things to pray for and energy to send out to different places. We love you for becoming involved. Involve yourself. If there is somewhere around you that does healing or somewhere around you that has a metaphysical group, please become part of it so that you can grow in understanding and knowledge. The people that are there will help you to understand your gifts better. The people that are there will help you and teach you about what is coming and more about the future. Many times this is true, but maybe it is you that need to go there to teach them. You and all those that are working in the light worker realm are examples to the earth. Remember that. 
Remember that you are an example. Remember that you must keep a good, uh, beautiful, loving, unconditional loving attitude toward those around you and be slow to anger, slow to be annoyed by those that are there. I know that can be difficult for some, or you grew up in a, in a way that uh, makes you annoyed constantly. But remember to call on God, call on the angels, let us help calm you. We know that you are there. We know that you have missions. We know that there is energy being used to uh, strengthen the light and the ascension. And please don't use the word ascension too lightly. It has so many different meanings to so many different people. Uh, find the meaning for yourself that resonates within you. It may not be the same meaning that resonates with others, but find one that resonates for you and work toward it because that is what is necessary. You need to be established in exactly what you're doing so that you may move forward and reach your goals. Thank you very much for listening. Is there any questions? Yes, we have several. Michelle Mullet, would you like to go first? Yes, thank Jeez. you. Hi, Uriel. Yeah. Greetings. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, I have uh, I have two questions. Um, you and I did a healing this morning um, on somebody in England, and I saw the number 223. Um, can you tell me if that was um, pertaining to what we did, and was it successful? It was a um, successful and my healing. Second question it was is, it was a successful healing. It wasn't a total healing, but there, the what you did was minimalize the. I think it was cancer, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so therefore, was, your yeah. your outreach to this person it was a male, I believe, wasn't it? It was a female. It was a female yeah. with cancer. The it did yeah. reach them yes. and it did help with their cancer condition. And so therefore, yes, it wasn't a full healing. They didn't accept it as a full healing. There, it, the, um, the healing energy was interrupted by earth energy, so it didn't get there as strongly as you might have liked it to, but it, did, it was very helpful and valuable, and it did uh, shrink the cancer in, in some ways. <laughs> Good. Um, I feel that she didn't, she didn't accept it because she... Um, uh she's really adamant about chemotherapy so i i don't feel that she allowed it completely correct this wasn't a complete healing yeah um the next question is um is there anything you can tell us about the, the next um seal being opened in uh in the spring or uh you know late spring is there anything you can tell us about that we there are many seals to be opened and one will be open soon, but I am not permitted to tell the time or exactly what it does. This has to be experienced by humans, and it cannot be, uh, no man should know the time or place or what is going to happen. But yes, there are those that will come. Thank you. You are welcome. All right, um, Michelle Euro, would you like to go next? Thanks, Uriel. Yes. I am curious um, what you feel like your um, specialties are. My specialties are helping with healing, communication, teaching, Right now, those of us that are archangels have taken off more responsibility than the regular angels. That's what makes us archangels is the amount of responsibility that we have taken on. Mm -hmm. So we have taken on all the gifts that we can help humanity with at this time. There was a time when all we did was communicate. 
but now we are communicators, healers, teachers, mm -hmm. and so much more. So I've never, so you are in fact a great guy, a great archangel to call on for help with healing. <laughs> of course. Of course. Anyone can call on us to, for help for whatever is necessary. Um, you must believe that we are going to help you. Call on us if you need just strength to rise up, or strength to overcome whatever it is that you're going through. So therefore, we have the ability to come to you and give you that little push that you need to get over the hump, so to speak. Do you have an archangel friend who's really super good at um, clar clarity and action <laughs> that I can call on for help? Clarity and action in what way? You mean um, as as the reading is concerned for your future or for yeah, what you're doing in like the if I have a thought and I think I should do this, and then I carry, then I actually do that thing. Like I have lots of thoughts and they just hang out in my head. So I'd like to have a thought and then an action, a thought and an action. <laughs> well, then you need to call on, well, call on any of us because we can actually deal directly with you through a session, through information. And if you have these thoughts, why do you not carry them out? That is a good question. I don't know. If you have a thought and it is a positive thought, and you do not act on it, then it goes by the wayside. So you lost an opportunity. Right. So I would say, please react to these thoughts so that others can be helped. Okay. okay. And that would be one kind of clarity that I can give to you because you are being clear about your thoughts. And there are many here that have these same thoughts but do not act upon them. And that is what I spoke about earlier, right. is you must act upon these things that are part of your mission. Thoughts of doing positive work do not just come to everyone. I, your fellow workmates and in the company that you work at, do you think that their mind is plagued or filled with thoughts of, of helping others? Uh, sometimes I would doubt that. <laughs> so therefore, if you have thoughts of help for other people, I would say definitely carry out that thought. There is a reason for it. There is a reason why these thoughts are placed within you. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything you want to add just for funsies for me specifically? Yes. I know that the thoughts that you have are for particular individuals. And the reason why you haven't followed through is because you know that some of these individuals do not act properly, react properly to what you have to say sometimes. And so it gives you a little bit of apprehension, but do not worry, it must be done and they, these thoughts will continue until you do it. All right, thank you very much, much love. Much love to you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to add a question of my own. I understand that angels can also help protect us. And I, I'm hearing that um, there are certain um, entities in the, in the, in the seven, seventh dimensional beings that are opposing our ascension and uh, doing a lot to interfere with us. Yes. What can we do to... Um, participate in our own protection and enhance it. Can to be in continuous prayer, be in continuous uh, thought about uh, the, the things that are going to happen with you, your, your projects, your, your mission, be in, in thoughts about this and call us if you, if there is anything happening that is questionable. You see humans, are very easily distracted by the third dimension. And that is fine. We know that. And so does God. God made you with a free will so that you can do whatever it is you want to do and enjoy your life as much as possible. Some of you have great missions, and so you need a little more protection. So call on us. 
but you can cover yourself with white light, call on God to protect you. There are so many things you can do for protection in your realm, and um, we will be there to help you at every turn. Thank you very much. Well, we've got a number of questions piling up in the chats. Um, there, we have two similar questions. Uh, Richard Hausman asks, what is my gift to earth? And Elga asks, uh, are, what are my gifts I can use right now on earth? Well, those are two different answers really, because they have two different missions. But when it comes to Richard, which was the first one you talked of, his gift to the earth and his mission to the earth is that he has many hybrid children and when the earth is have after first contact these hybrid children will be a value to the earth in many ways their knowledge and understanding will bring uh, new eras of thought to the earth whereas elga is working in a different way her area of understanding is dealing with the elders and dealing with the higher species and also with Quan Lin. She is here to bring a peace to all things around her and peace to the world in many ways. She is reaching out spiritually and in the um, astral and doing much work that is necessary for first contact to come and for it to be successful. All right, uh, we have a question from Lilypad. Uh, she would like to know, can you help me to open my one heart chakra? Of course, your heart chakra is open, but it needs open farther because what you find, what I find with you, Lilypad, is what I find with many other people, is that it's hard for you to open your heart to everyone. It's hard for you to have unconditional love, and it's hard for you to, to love the way you feel that you should be loving. And so, yes, call on us to open your heart chakra, to brighten it, and to sustain that opening so that you may be able to feel and to react in the most loving ways to those around you. And we have a question from Peter Blake Jr. He asks, which arch archangel am I most closely aligned with? In other words, which archangel do I resonate with most at this time? Well, you have an idea that uh, you resonate with a particular ones. And that is true, you do. But other than those, you, you yes, Raphael and Gabriel for sure. But there are others. There is Raziel, who is a very wonderful archangel that no one uh, or very few know too much about. But look him up. He is part of who is working with you as well. And Raguel is another angel about justice. And there's something in your life that needs justice. And he is working with you on that. All right, Michelle, would you like to ask your question? There is well, I would like to know what my gifts um, are also that I have to give and why I'm here. You, as long as you're answering. <laughs> yes, you're, you, you have gifts of healing and toning. You already know these gifts for, of healing. But other than that, you have gifts, uh, some psychic gifts as well. But you're a little bit afraid to use them just as some of these others. So what I suggest that you do is do the meditations, and I know that meditation isn't your strong point, but I see that you can do some deeper meditations, and in those meditations, intention that you find out the greater gifts that are available to you, and there are some that are very, very strong that are available to you. Others of you that are still looking, do your meditations, your constant prayer, if you really are really looking for your mission in this world, you must be, you must search diligently because sometimes it is not apparent to everyone what they are supposed to do. So you must find it. But if you want to talk to an angel about it, you may. 
Okay. There, are, there is someone in the room here that wants to ask a question. Thank you. Let us know um, if that is uh, able to be done at this time. Yes, this is a great time for that. Very good. And your name is? Angie. Angie has a question. You were talking about, well, Michelle was talking about um, listening to the voices in her head and acting and moving on it. There's so much uh, positive and negative energy out there. How can we, when we were, when we understand that we do receive these messages, how is it other than, you know, like, does it resonate in my heart, but how are we to really know where it falls? Well, because you'll know if it's negative or positive for sure. If it's a negative message that is coming to you, you'll feel that negativity. You'll feel hesitation. You'll feel uh, uh, not drawn to it like you would a positive message or a positive reaction. I know that some of you are getting messages and you're wondering, oh, is this good or bad? But remember, if it's not coming in a negative way, if it's not coming to you where you're going, ooh, I, I'm not feeling very positive about that, then you know that it is something you need to consider. At least try to understand what the spirits are trying to tell you. Because many times, some of these messages are a little masked, and they're masked for a reason. The reason they are is so that you will search and will find the, the most wonderful message that is there. Sometimes that takes a little uh, prayer <coughs> and a little uh, diligence. Yes, you're welcome. I have a question. There's another question in the room. Barbara, Yaria. Barbara, yes. My question is, I know a part of my life path, just a little bit. And my question is, I find it hard sometimes for me to do that because of physical problems that I have. And it's just really gets to me because of that. Okay. There are others that are in the, your same place. She has physical problems that stop her or hinder her from doing her mission the way she feels that she should. However, they would not have given you the mission if they did not think you could handle it. So therefore, you must look, research why they are keeping you down. You will be able to do whatever it is that they told you to do because the spirit strengthens you. The spirit edifies the body and will, even though you may wake up in the morning and feel absolutely miserable. There will be a time in the, after you do your prayers, after you bring in all these thought processes, that they will strengthen you enough that you can get your mission done. They would not give it to you if they did not expect you to do it or did not think you could do it. Okay. Um, but I understand what you're saying. It is not always easy to do your missions. Missions are not easy. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, many of your missions are very difficult, in fact. And you have taken these on because you are able to do them. You have taken these on because you have the ability to do them, whereas someone else may not have that ability. You have special abilities that others do not have. You are unique to God. Each individual has their own unique purpose and their own unique skill set and their own unique creativity god gives you all that he has to work with but he knows what you will choose because you come into this life to choose it and so therefore rise up in what you know to be your highest excitement what you know to be the gifts that he is wanting you to use in this lifetime can you tell me some of my gifts? You are artistic. You have conversational gifts. You are unconditionally loving in most cases. I can think of one case you're not quite unconditionally loving. That's but family. That's Yes, <laughs> it is. But I, uh, the thing is, you have uh, energies to give to others. You help others 
psychologically with your artistic abilities because they are able to have a calm period of time during which they will, they are learning from you and many of you have skills that you can be taught and this is a great thing because first of all when you're teaching it calms people's minds and especially if it's interactive teacher like with her, your artistic their minds are calm they're happy they're doing something creative they feel like there's a purpose with this you do have a purpose with this and with this you're also bringing along your personality which is an example to the world shining your light being a positive and enlightening source so that not only are you teaching but you are showing them what kind of a person they should be perhaps and what kind of a person they would want to be because you are the example and they want to follow that example because you seem happier than they are. I do enjoy teaching the classes. Yes. So there. You have many gifts other than that as well. You have galactic languages and you will eventually have the interpretations. That means that spirit is with you. So and many of you have galactic languages. You and these languages help you pray for things in your life that you don't know know how to pray for. Let me give you an example. There's sometimes where you're going, all right, I'm I'm at a loss of what to do today for my ministry, for my mission. What should I do? Speak your galactic language. Let spirit pray for you. Let spirit become part of you so that you may find those special thoughts for that day and it may not be that you are going to be doing anything except praying for the sick sending out energy or just being a light in the world some days there is not a great mission to be done you can't have a great mission every single day but every single day can lead up to a great mission so listen to that very carefully yeah. You're welcome. Well, we're building up a queue in the chats. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can remember where we left off. Um, Richard Hausman has another question. Um, three or more of my children are interested in military and government types of jobs. Are they going to be helping the earth in that way? It's very possible. But remember, the earth has to ask for that kind of help for them to be valuable. This is something that the Earth will need in the future and will have the support of others outside the third dimensional realm with. But remember, they have to have first contact first and they have to ask for some help also because if they do not ask, it will not be given. Okay, and Lilypad writes, what's the chakra of the America? What's the shocker? It's the uh, solar plexus. Um, the solar plexus is the actual mindset of the entire world at this time. Uh, so solar plexus is where you have war, arguments, and battling, and negativity, fighting with the good, with free will, with um, planning, with drive, decisiveness, with all the different things that are in the world right now, you are trying to move into a heart, into a heart-like chakra, but it will be impossible to do that until you have overcome the solar plexus chakra thought process, which is very third dimensional. It is the most third dimensional chakra that there is. The 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 root, the sacral, and the and the uh, solar plexus are how the world is living at this time. Okay, Christine has a question. Can you unmute? Yes. Um, thank you, Yurl, for being here. Um, I was wondering, I like to make um, Reiki crystal grids. Of course. And for the Earth, for the earth um, I have a globe, and I had just put um, different crystals around it. 
but now to redirect or to re um, well redirect um, can I put um, the globe there and then put different um, crystals around it that um, specific, that go specifically to the um, solar plexus and the root all right do you feel your stones and crystals can you feel them no do you have Not an idea what they represent yes i know what they represent good then take your strongest whenever you're doing this kind of thing and i'm talking to everyone now because all of you should actually make a grid at one time to just see how it feels and how it works for you you may be surprised that you may want to keep it because it gives you information. So some of these grids can be very, very powerful, especially to those of you that can feel your stones and your stones will tell you where to put them in the grid. Now, for your, your case that you do not feel the stones, find those, uh, find the heart-centered stones, find uh, the solar plexus stones, the uh -huh. sacral, uh, all the ones that you know that will fit into this grid, put the heart stone at the very top. The okay. reason for that is all the heart stones should be what you are uh, moving into. Okay. That should be moving up to. And so you want your heart chakra stones to be on the top and your lower chakra stones to be on the bottom so that you, whenever you're sending energy, to your grid, it yes. is moving in the right direction for okay. mankind, and you're moving that grid up. You may want to take out all but one root chakra stone, unless you are an ungrounded person. But I see that you are very grounded, so only use one root chakra stone and put that at the base, the very okay. bottom, opposite of the green stones, all right? Okay. Um I have, um, because usually I lay them out on the ground, um, yep. flat, but I have um, a pyramid, a copper pyramid. Wonderful. If, if I put it in the co the globe in the copper uh, underneath and then put the heart chakra at the top of like a capstone on, yes. on top of the pyramid, would that um, be just as effective or more yeah. effective? It is by your intention that that heart chakra stone be what you're trying to attain. So yes. therefore, the position of it in your intention is very vital and okay. very important. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, we have a question from Reinhardt. Can you unmute? Greetings. Yes, greetings. Will. I would like to know if um, the at the time with the new energy, my um, ability to heal by holding up the right hand and healing with the left hand, uh, but not touching the person because of losing the frequency. This is what I hear is available now. Is this activated with me? It is. Let me tell you what it is. There are all kinds of modalities that are uh, av available to you. What mm -hmm. this does, you, it makes you a greater conduit. You are bringing in yes. with the right hand yes. and you are expelling great energy with the left hand, which is a very strong healing energy. With the right hand raised, you are bringing in a greater amount of energy through that hand. because. Yes you're not only using one kind of energy or bringing in one kind of energy, but there are multiple kinds of energies that can come through the hand through in this way. Many are using their hands face down and letting the energies coming in through the crown and through the other areas. Uh, and that is also good because other energies can come that way as well. But this is also a wonderful conduit because you have the, the palm chakra, the finger mm -hmm. chakras, and also the wrists. Oh. And as you are doing that, the I wanted to mention this as well. 
the crown chakra filters what energies are needed to go through to be healed uh, during this time the crown chakra and also mother earth is sending energy as well but mm -hmm. this is universal energy and so it is really not filtering out the energy that is actually needed but bringing the full strength of energy that um that it feels is necessary for healing of all kinds not just for the specific purpose that you are healing for so it is a greater conduit because the crown chakra is a filter yes thank you Gloria. that helps a lot you're welcome thank you Does that makes sense to everyone it's not necessary to, to use this this for your healing be, but it is a powerful way to do it there are so many uh, modalities but there are stronger some are stronger than others mm -hmm. so find that modality for yourself find your own style of healing find your own methods because those are the strongest what you feel the strongest of energy going into someone else is what is working for you and it is the way that you were designed to use that healing energy you are designed specifically for certain ways some of you are more octorian some of you are more yugil some of you are more draconian but mm -hmm. they use energy differently and expel it and heal differently as well so use your own style use your own energies that doesn't mean to not do reiki that does not mean that you shouldn't be using symbols or whatever sometimes these symbols enhance all that you are doing that is what they're meant to do they are attuned into you to enhance their strength and their energy so therefore you may be using this but use your own style and method if the styles and methods are not working for you use your own bring your own uh, a little bit of style to that because it may work much better for you how many of you and i know that a lot of you are going to raise your hands or chime in have found that your own style works better have found that the way that you do it is more efficient that's right than other ways that sometimes you're taught something and it works but it doesn't work as well as the way you do it yeah do it Thank your you. the way that works best for you yeah find I, that experiment a little bit yeah i, I just do it now <laughs> thank you <laughs> the thing is you need to experiment some of you a little bit with that do not be afraid to do that mm -hmm. you'll notice that it's either better or worse and if it's worse do not use that style if it's better do use it but if you find that the normal reiki practices Jore practices, whatever, are working for you, why change it? Yes, thank you, Aurea. Oh, and the galactic energy healing, a wonderful method as well. If you find that is working for you, why change it? But use your own style with it. Yes, thank you, Aurea. You're welcome. Wonderful. Michelle, did you have another question? Michelle Euro? No, I didn't actually. I was just saying me, like, I agree. My style works better than what I was taught. <laughs> All right. Um, I see one question in the YouTube chat that hasn't scrolled away on me uh, about hybrid children. Do they get some human soul component through the human gene package? <laughs> yes, actually they do. Um, and that is part of the hybrid program that is so beautiful is they get an understanding of what it feels like to be human and not human and to be a little different than everybody else they understand that but they also understand uh, a greater amount of compassion because of it if you are different than everybody around you if you have some elements of you that are not quite the same as everybody else. You feel compassion for those people 
that also are not the same as everybody else. Okay, Thank the next, oh, is there more of that? Yeah, well, I cannot, I, I, I was told not to go into that any farther. Okay, Sheer has the next question. Greetings, how are you? I am well. Uh, I have a request for one of my mom's friends. She passed away last night. And my mother asked uh, if you can assist her with her uh, transition. Her name is Rivka. Yes, I know about that, yes. Your mother has already been praying about that, and we have received a lot of her, her, her uh, transmissions. Yes, we. there is no problem with this transition. She is a, a good woman. She had her moments, but she will be fine. Let your mother know that she is going to be a-okay. Thank you very, very much. She is. Uh, she may even talk to her at some time before she translates completely, but she will be going to the light, and there is no question about that. Thank you. You're welcome. There is another question in the room. Do you have okay. other questions there as well? We have two in the queue, but go ahead with the room. All right, there is one here. There was one single drop of water from my plant and then one single drop of water in from the tree. Do you know what that was about? I do not. I was told that it was from the angels. The angels are aware of many things and it may be a sign that there is angelic work afoot. But it wasn't from me, so I cannot answer it completely. There was another angel involved. But these drops usually are a symbol of their tears or their DNA of some sort being uh, put into Earth in some way. So I'm not sure exactly who did that or what purpose that it had. But if you did see two teardrops in one day, that is unusual. Yes. And there's another question here. Um, I know this is kind of a personal question, but my female dog, how much longer will she be with me? I cannot tell you that. No person is supposed to know how long their animals or their family are to live. They, they must pray for them and give them the greatest attention every day just as if it were their last. It is not a good idea to tell you when anything is going to pass, then you make too many preparations, and it may not be what you expect. So therefore, when you are preparing for someone to leave your family, or a pet to leave, or for, for anyone to be passing from this realm, treat them as if every day is their last day, with great love and understanding and kindness. Not that you're going to say, oh, I know you're dying. You shouldn't be saying that. But you should be just treating them with all the love and respect due to them. They know what's going on. Believe me. They can feel it. They understand it. And in some cases, you may even need to give permission for some to pass because they feel so responsible for the, everyone in this lifetime, and they've always felt responsible for the upbringing of their children or the upbringing of, their, uh, of others or the connection to many, that you may have to say to them, I give you permission to go. Some of them may be so um, holding on so strongly that they are suffering in the meantime. And, and that is not necessary. They they do need to go. All right. Just that was just a side note. All right. The next question is from David. Yes. Hello. Hello. I see the top of your head. Okay. There we go. So, right now I'm 
wondering about uh, intuition and, and guidance because I'm I've been looking for places and it's been very difficult and I've come across I've had places where they seem kind of perfect and really great but then I have some kind of unknown feeling like I shouldn't go there but have no idea why and then um, do, you feel a great deal, do you feel a great deal of fear it, yeah there's a lot of unknown there's too much unknown and moving with people. you must set aside your personal feelings and look at the people that are there and look at their their uh, their auras and their understanding and the way they talk this is what you must uh, concentrate on when you're looking for a place to live and some of you out there are looking for other places to live you must look at the people that are are selling or renting the place so that you see what kind of, uh, of uh, place you're getting into because you want to have good people uh, that are with you. So remember that. Look at the people. Do not look at the house itself or feel uncomfortable about, about the place. You must look at the people that are actually selling or renting the home. Those are the clues that will let you know um, if it's a good place or not. And you have eyes to see if it's good also. If there are repairs to be made or whatever, please let them know that you see that, that you are not just going to brush over that. But um, many people are very understanding uh, when they're renting homes and selling homes of what is there and what is not. And believe me, they are very aware of all things. So it's not really intuition, it's just kind of me not. Intuition seems to take you away from all kinds of opportunities. So I would say no, do not use your intuition for everything. Okay, because the one place that I am thinking of, I, I won't be able to meet the people before I move in. Ah, well, pray about that. That is something for prayer there. You see, God will direct and you will feel uh, the leading of God to go that direction if that is what he wants. Okay. Remember out there, whenever you're making decisions, no matter what they are, a place to live, a place to go, vacationing, whatever it is, make sure that you consult God or some higher spirit so that they know that you are interested in a positive and successful outcome. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I'll add that. Thank you. You're welcome. Much love. Much love. Okay, Don is next. Hello, Uriel. Blessings. Blessings. I wish to thank you for yesterday. You are very welcome. Um, I have a question regarding piece of a meteorite that I found okay yeah I was wondering can you tell me where it came from absolutely and or if it is inhabited it is oh, great uh, but that it came from it came from Mars actually and actually before that it came from either Jupiter or Saturn one of the one of the moons but it, it did come to uh, Mars first, and then it came to you. But it is inhabited with a, a an interesting spirit. It's very positive, but it is um, not, a, not the kind of spirit you can talk to, but it is of an inert uh, kind of uh, gas that's within it, and okay. it has sentience. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It is an unusual piece. Yes. Hold on to it. It's val it's valuable. Thank you. Yes. Anything okay. else? Not at this time. Thank you. Very well. All right. We have a question in the uh, uh, the uh, in the um, hangout chat from Yad Daniel. Uh, I would like to understand the energy of money. How could we heal and have a balanced relationship with money? 
That is a very good question. Very few people ever ask this question. Money is the sole source of all things on your planet in the sense that without it, you are you have nothing except for your love and joy and uh, but you see that is everything so in order to have the perfect uh the a perfect acquaintance with money is to have an, a perfect acquaintance with yourself and know exactly what kind of balance you have with it you see Many make it the sole purpose of their life. Do not make it the sole purpose of your life. Joy, love, family, understanding, goodness, wisdom. Mis uh, so many other things are more important. But yet, I know you must have it to survive in the sense to move forward. But in, uh, in the third dimension. So put it here. Put it as third in your line. Put love and family first before you put money. Put money third, but do not attach it to love. Attach it to necessity so that you may understand and know that it is a necessity, but that you do not have to bring it into a love relationship with you. Does that make sense? Now, there are many ways to look at money. Sometimes money can be very positive. It can help you to move forward and get the things that you need to help other people. In this way, money can be very beneficial. It can help your family. It can help your friends. It can help people that are unable to help themselves. Absolutely, you can, but remember, Beyond necessity, your family and your friends and love come much, uh, come first. <coughs> and then your charitability is part of that. And if money is there to give, then absolutely give it. And the thing is about money, the more you give, the more you get back. And those people that don't give anything to anyone or anything except for their own needs, they don't get much. They don't, they're, you will always be wanting because you do not give enough. When you give, you receive. Remember that. If you give with your heart, if you give of your money to others, it will come back. But if you are, if you are just using your money for yourself, and don't give any money to anybody else, you're not going to get much. You're going to get exactly what you give, very little. What if you're giving it for the wrong reason? What would be the wrong reason? To get a benefit for yourself. Well, then you're spending it on yourself. You're, you're spent, that's, the, that's what I just said. If you spend it for on yourself, you won't get much back at least for the most part. There are some that are led by others to invest in certain things that they will get some back, but it is a trust issue as well. So this is, money is a very complex thing to talk about. And I know many of you have many ideas about money and I'm an angel and I don't spend it, so I know little. So, but I do see what I see. I could expand on that, but I don't know if I should. No. But remember, to receive, you must give. If you give love, you'll receive love. If you give a great deal of love, you'll receive it. You may not receive it exactly the way you gave it, but you will receive it. All right, we are getting lots of questions in the chats, and I just wanted to check in. Uh, at the beginning, we had a lot of requests for others. Are there some waiting in the queue with important messages for us uh, besides yourself? Um, let a few more questions go through. I'm not sure who is waiting. Let me look. 
Can you give me a moment? Please. One moment. Alma Talk is waiting. However, he said go ahead with a few more questions. All right. Well, let's see. Um, well, they're scrolling off so fast, it's hard to keep track of them. Um, uh, Yud Yaman uh, asks, I recently dressed up as an angel in a play and felt a strong connection to you. Was it you or some other angel? How can I better connect to your energy? Yes. You, what you were doing is connecting to angel energy in general. And so many of us were probably there when you were connecting. And yes, of course, I would probably be there as well as Gabriel, Uriel. Oh, well, I'm Uriel, but Ariel. Um, I say I said my own name because I felt I feel that I was absolutely there. Um, Michael, I think Sandalphon was there. You connected to many different angels at one time, and that is why you feel these the that and it was a strong connection wasn't it and the reason for the strong connection is because one of them has gifted one of the angels has gifted you with a little tear or a piece of their dna you must have a mission that is important what a blessing uh, elga asks uh, I am on a big crossroad in my life. There is a move involved. Can you see if that new place I have found is one that would bring joy to me and my little birds? You must bring the joy to it. It is not a living thing. With your grace, beauty, and understanding, it will be a wonderful and vivacious, alive, gorgeous existence. It is your essence that will fill the home, not the other way around. All right, let's see. We've got a few more. Um, Tim George asks, what is the name of the planet currently made for the hybrid children, and where is it located in relation to the Earth? The, the planet Polana is the planet for the hybrid children, and it is in the Pleiades. All right. Um, let's see. Lilypad had a question, but it scrolled off. Uh, see if I, I know. It seems like they were getting hit fast and furiously there. Um, I'm not finding it at the moment. Um, I'll. Um, <laughs> uh, Here's one from AJ. Will the earth ever be unable to sustain human population? And if not, where would we consider going? Is it Mars? You could go to Mars. Well, first of all, the first question is, will the earth ever lose its sustainability? And down the road, yes, it will. You will wear out the earth just like you are wearing, like your bodies wear out. It is a body and it will wear out. But many of you will go to the next dimension before that happens. But those that are left behind will continue to wear out the earth and will have to find new homes. And Mars is one of those places. There is also a, a planet around Jupiter that is inhabitable. And you will find these places and and uh, but that will not be in the near future. But let me tell you this: there are many uh, corporations and many uh, different individuals who are wealthy making their own ships to go to these places. This is a race for Mars, and what you must keep in mind that is, if these people are successful in going to Mars, they have to go at a particular time. All the rockets will be launching within a day or two because they have to be in certain proximity to Mars in its, uh, in its uh, spherical rotation around the sun. 
And so you have to be in a close enough proximity to Mars to actually get there. So it, it's actually, they'll be taking off. And so by the time they get there, there will be, if they're going in a straight line, you see where my hand is, it will be moving in that, in that kind of direction. So that uh, when they leave Earth, Mars will be coming into direct path with them. Do you understand that? So there will be a time, and it is a one-way. It is a one-way uh, mission for many because it will take a lot of time for those to get back in that kind of uh, rotation and meet up with each other in the right way to actually do a launch or to come back. Okay, I think we're going to take one more question from the chat, and then I think we have people eagerly awaiting Alma talk. Uh, thank you, Don, for reposting Lilypad's question. It reads, uh, was Angel Morani the same angel called Gabriel? No. Uh, uh, Mar uh, no, that is a different angel. All right. Well, um, I think I, I think we'd like to give uh, Alma Talk some time. So my apologies to the, any chats we've missed in the uh, from the YouTube chat. Thank you for your lively conversation. I will leave you now and bring Alma Talk. He is eagerly awaiting to speak to you. And, and thank you for fielding such a diverse array of questions. Yes. Keep in mind, people, that you want to ask questions that benefit the whole group, not just yourself. Remember that. The blessings will come back to you. That is why I stretched out some of your questions to include others. Because when you ask questions that just pertain to yourself, it does not benefit the whole group. And I, will, I would love to help as many people as possible. Much love. Greetings, I am Alma Talk. Welcome. I forget who requested Alma Talk. Do they want to start the questions? It doesn't matter, but I am here. I did. It's been a while since I have spoken to any of you, and I am eager to answer your questions. But first, I do have a small message for you. This is a time and era that there is much doubt. But then again, there is also much to do. So cast aside your doubts, your fe fears, and become more involved. I know many of you have been told that you have missions, that you have things to do, and sometimes you are not sure. But you're really not seeking out the answer to that question. You're sort of saying, well, it'll come to me. It'll be here soon enough. I'm sure that something will happen. You cannot treat your future and the future of your world so tritely or so without care. You must be involved. I'm sorry if I said tritely. That's not a good word. But it is that you must find something that excites you and start working toward that something that is valid in your world and start working toward it. You have gifts, you have excitements, find them. And if you're not excited about anything, then I would have to tell you to do an introspection to find out why. What is causing you to be um, not excited about helping the world? Find those things, find that way, find that mission. Because that's why many of you are here to understand better how to move forward. Isn't that why you're here? To find out the truth about who you are, to find out the truth about what's going on out here, to find out the truth about the cosmos and the missions 
that are and the prophecies and all the things that are wonderful to know that's why you're here so if you're here there is a reason and that reason is important find out exactly what it is all right i will field some questions okay i believe michelle would be first then i'm gonna talk <laughs> it's been so long i know i have been still working but not in the public eye it was beautiful to um share space with you today thank you for coming thank you um I didn't actually, I was just thinking how much I missed you and loved you and I would like to talk to you again. So I'm not really sure that I have a, my question, I think was something on a personal nature because I forgot about it. I just found out some information last night about um, kind of a demon energy that likes to follow me around with the name of Clyde. <laughs> I see. I don't well, know if that's accurate, A, and B. I don't, I, did, I don't know if his demon name is Clyde. That sounds like a human name. But yeah. the thing is, he can take on aliases. And if he's following you, you around, that means he wants to discourage you from doing the things that you are meant to do. So tell Clyde to buzz off. Well, that's what I did last night. So I just wanted to, um, I keep having things come in where I'll be like really excited about a thing and I'll start to do it and I'll feel energies start to like kind of infiltrate my brain. And then I become like not able to function. So this is something that you need to find out why, and we will help you with that. And there are others that are just like you. So, uh -huh. I understand that. Good. So what do you suggest that we do? You need a personal time? session, yes. Okay. All right. I love you, by the way. Love you. <laughs> what other questions are out there? I'm not seeing any yet. Are there any in the room? What is your direct involvement with uh, many of us on the planet? What is my direct involvement with many of you on the planet? I am here to give information. I have, uh, there is one that has written down many of my uh, thoughts. There is one that has written down many of the things that uh, are to be brought to the earth. And then they were cut off from the world by difficulties in their own personal life. Hopefully these records will re, re, uh, surface, I believe they will at the appropriate time. But let me tell you about some of the things that are in these writings. I have given the new numerology. I've given the new um, astrology. Um, perhaps not to the same person. I have talked to several in my travels and these things will come to light because they must. Your astrology from your point of view is flawed and your numerology is also flawed in some ways, but you make it work because of your belief systems. But we will uh, bring that into a greater light in the future. We will bring um, astrology into a, a totally new understanding because it is actually a wonderful gift, but it's not done the same way as looking at the stars uh, from the perspective that you are looking at them, but looking at the stars from the perspective of your actual birthing. Uh, as you come out of the birth canal, that part of the sky, which is, and the movement of the planet and all the things that are part of that, are your actual horoscope and they will uh, be it, it it does matter where you are in the earth and it or and it matters where you are when you were born if you are born on mars your uh horoscope will be very different than if you were born on the earth and so you will see different uh parts of that uh come through in your life not that it will be um 
alien different because you are human in your energies. It will be human, but it will also be different because the part of the sky that's being witnessed during your birth is different. How does that help each individual person with that information? I don't understand the question. I just explained it. Like, the, when the day that you're born, and then moving forward, how with the new information that you're going to provide and bring it to... Oh, it's much more accurate. It's just much more accurate, that's all. It's not telling you everything that you're going to do, your grocery list of every day, but it's going to give you a much better idea of who you are in the sense of the in the relationship to the universe and and to uh, the way of distance and the energies that are there and the all the things that exist they're much more in play than what is happening in your current horoscope Although your your planets are much uh, very much a part of that, but they are not as much a part of it as sometimes you give them. It depends, and I will explain that in when I show everyone what that horoscope is. Any other questions? Yes, hello. Hello. Yes, uh, my name is Kat. Um, I hello hello. Um, I would like to ask, what is the difference between uh, subconscious and suppressed emotions? Oh, excellent. Uh, excellent questions. The subconscious is the Akashic record of the, the, your life. Every single second of your life is recorded in the subconscious. And that is something that is very special because... After you pass, that information will be checked against all the things that are happening uh, that the uh, actual Akashic records are recording. So it will be a check and balance with your Akashic records. Suppressed emotions are something that are in the subconscious, of course, because they are part of your Akashic record, but they are not indeed... Um, they are indeed separate in, in the sense that they have a different effect on the body. They can actually cause disease, cause problems, and actually uh, bring stress and unhappiness to the body and, and spirit. So suppressed emotions are something that can be dealt with. You really cannot deal with the whole subconscious. You can deal with maybe bits and pieces of it. But you can deal with suppressed emotions. You can find them and uh, have them dealt with. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, I love it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> don't we, don't are we suppose, or at least me, um, because the word subconscious is, it sounds like uh, something that I'm not in uh, uh, contact or, or aware and uh, release this energy. So I can be free yeah. of it. There what are do you think of it. There are times when you do become attached or aware of certain things in the subconscious. It is possible. People can do that. That delve into the subconscious and find certain portions that might be needed to be. Um, exposed and dealt with however if if it's something that needs to be exposed and dealt with you will be feeling it within your consciousness that is part of um a part of the truth of your being there will be the the expression uh, coming out that there is something that needs to be dealt with you will know it you will feel it and so therefore uh, you don't need to go to the subconscious to find these things. You just need to go to your emotions. You need to go to your health. Many times your health will let you know if there's something wrong in the emotional area. Sometimes it, it is because of repressed emotions 
that you have cancers or heart problems or stress in your life. So you need to do an evaluation periodically within yourself, a nice meditation, going in with the intention of finding all those things that need to be worked with or need, need to be uh, dealt with and, uh, and then have them come to light so that you can be healthier, happier, and deal with those things that sometimes get out of your uh, direct consciousness, but buried in your emotional uh, areas in your body. Yes, awesome. So, so conscious, subconscious is not something hidden that you have to release? And... Not necessarily. Uh -huh, okay, great. It's just a record of all the things that you are and do every breath you take, every moment of your life. That is what the subconscious is. You can draw on it to bring out some past facts or things of that nature. The rest of your life, your past lives are underneath the chakra system. So if you're looking for a past life regression, they will be going into your chakras and looking for those things <clears throat> that were part of your past life that need to bring, be brought to the present so that they can be healed. So you can heal them all the way into the past. And so that is something different. That's not the subconscious, but that is the past life consciousness, which are under the chakras. Now, is, does, is that understood? Do you get that? Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, <clears throat> actually, everything from past lives and... Uh, they reflect actually in what we are now. Absolutely. We don't need to go in the past to look right. how, so you, what we get, are. So this life that you are living now will become a past life. Yeah. Go to the Akashic Records and be stored in your, in your chakras next life. Or if, if you wish, in the Oversoul or whatever you want to call it, it will be able to be accessed fully uh, there if you wish to. Well, my purpose now is to become aware of, of fully aware and clean everything. So, uh, ah, excellent! A very, a very positive thought process. Because yes. once you get rid of the, um, well, I shouldn't say get. Once you cleanse yourself of these past thoughts and past lives that had some bearing on the negativity you feel in this life, you can actually move forward in a much uh, better way. You must many times forgive many people and yourself for some of these actions in the past. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I, if I may ask another question, how does it feel the second chakra? Because I'm starting to um, the second get the chakra sense... The sacral chakra is an awareness of sexuality, an awareness of creativity, awareness of uh, things that can be. Uh, it's a very creative area, the this, this sacral, but it also is uh, uh, predetermined in determining what you want out of your, your life uh, children, family, sexuality, your orientations, your mm -hmm. thought processes about the future in, in a more family-oriented way, uh, not necessarily like the solar plexus is more uh, business-driven or and drive, but more of family, love, understanding, wisdom, <laughs> but okay. all connected to your sexual drive, connected to your creativity correct connected to artistics the, the artistic side of you oh awesome awesome thank you very much and the, the uh, power chakra the power chakra yeah the third one the sacral chakra and uh, the uh, solar plexus chakra is the one that is about planning a future with drive and success but it also contains a lot of anger and because with drive, you have interactions with others and th those interactions can, also, can be confrontational. 
And so it is a confrontational area in the body, the most confrontational area. Yeah, conflicts, conflicts. Fighting for to be first. It is your consciousness, how how you feel about yourself, if you're if you're outgoing, if you are uh, not outgoing, all these things are in that solar plexus area because you're planning your life from there and it is a battle because you yeah. are battling third dimension for all the things that you want. And in third dimension, there's other people that will be battling you because they want your position or your what you have. And so it's it's very it's a very confrontational place but yet you can overcome that with bringing your thoughts from the heart chakra into the into the uh, solar plexus if you are advanced enough you and I believe that you could probably do that there are many of you that can bring your heart chakra thought processes into your solar plexus and calm it down and make it a place of peace and not of war Yes, awesome, awesome. You, there's a lot of um, you. You, you gave me a lot to work on and process. Thank you very much, very Ex much. Excellent. Yes, there's a question here again. I want to go back to the subconscious mind. There's many of us that do a lot of astral work that do things in the spirit, but yet we don't have access to those memories. Correct. However, we know that that's happening. Correct. Is there anything that we can do to uh, maybe make that connection? Because we are all doing great things in the astral. Correct. Let me tell you why you cannot connect to the, the astral is because it's a, not in this dimension. When you are in the astral, you are beneath between dimensions. You're not in the fourth dimension. You're not in the third dimension. You're in a spiritual dimension. If you are in a spiritual dimension, you do not always remember what happens there. If you connect with what is happening in the spiritual dimension, that gives you, that means that you are very psychic and that you can connect to in between places that are not of this planet. Of course, many of you are doing very good work in the astral and you would want to remember it but it is not a place that your psyche is set up to remember however there are some that will eventually open this portion of their psyche so that they can remember bits and pieces it is not something that you were evolved to do at this time but it will be something that you will be evolved to do in the future uh, especially when you hit other dimensional uh areas as you move through the dimensions, as you do your rising and ascending toward God, you will be able to access that a little bit more. But remember, even in the next dimension, there will be an astral beyond that. So, and that will be between dimensions as well. And it won't be in the fourth dimension or the fifth dimension, but it will be between the dimensions and you will do work there. Now, Many of you are doing wonderful work, and you'll say, how can I do it in that, in the sense that I don't have a body, I'm, I don't really have any essence to me if I'm in spirit, but yet your energy does the work. It is not that your hands and feet are doing the work, but your energy is actually helping others do the work in the physical. So your uh, astral body will go into those workers or go into certain areas to help with the energy of that. I don't think that's ever explained well enough because they just say, oh, you're doing wonderful work in the astral. So, but you are actually going in to help others. You are, many of you will go into one person to help lift or do something that is very difficult and they are able to do it because you, they are being helped by those in the astral and they are very usually very spiritual people and usually are calling on those to help help them with their chores in the astral in the in the physical there's another question here 
Hey there. So regarding the astral, I have a friend and I that go to the white light and we talk in the white light. And we're, you remember we're it? For when we come back. Very good. Is that the astral? Yes, astral? it would be. Uh, if you go anywhere outside your body to talk, that would be going into the astral, unless you direct it, du uh, absolutely direct it to somewhere in particular. So, and that can be done as well, but you are not set up to do that either. But yes, that would be remembering some things in the astral. And so that is a. Yeah, it, so you are able to remember some of your dealings in the astral because the white light is with you. And that is your memory, actually. You're bringing God into that uh, remembrance, remembrance. Some of you can remember, I think, but there is a reason why they are able to do that. I am not sure why. I would have to investigate that. Any other questions? Well, we've got quite a few. Christine is next. Christine. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me, <clears throat> how is it possible to get a download of numerology that is more... Um, more up to date um i would have to set that up with somebody but it would not probably release itself immediately until it thought you could possibly understand it fully so let me see what i can do about that for humans the numerology that i have is similar to the numerology on your earth except uh some of the numbers are not quite accurate in, in what they uh represent so I will, um, I will try to bring that to the earth very soon. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I've been sp speaking about this numerology for years, but I have not yet brought it to the earth. Shame on me, but I will do that. Well, thank you. Um, I had a question going back to your introduction. Uh, I particularly find it frustrating when people tell me to discover my truth and, and I understand that our truth is an in, intrinsic process, and so it can't really be directed externally, but perhaps you could give a, a, a bit more uh, clues as to how people in general can connect with their own truth and empowerment. All right. What is it that you like to do? What is it that most excites you about what you do in your life? You don't have to say that, but think about it. There is something attached to that that is in is something that is part of your mission. And if that is talking to and communicating with world, other worlds, if it's a if it's uh, setting up uh, different informational sites, I, th I think I'm seeing where you're at here. But the thing is, don't make it such an overwhelming thought. There are many things that you can do, many things that are talents of yours and many ways that you can help the earth. Just do them all. Do whatever it is that you do, and do the best that you can at it. Now, some of you have specific things that you are meant to do. Healing, some of you are meant to do uh, teachings, some of you are meant to do whatever. You will know those things. You will feel it. You will understand it. It will be part of who you are to want to do these things. And some of you that are going through a time where I'm not interested in anything, that's the ones that concern me because you've lost interest. Someone has put you down for your interests or something has happened that you are not connecting to it. So those are the ones that I am concerned about because you, you cannot see what makes you happy. Oh, my goodness. That's exactly what it is. You can't see what really makes you happy. What really makes you happy in the in this world? Uh, and some of you are going, oh, I can't talk about that. But yes, you can. If it's something that makes you happy, it must be connected to something that can help the earth in some way. You may not think so at this moment, but there are so many ways to look at everything. And there are ways to help the world with whatever interests you have, believe it or not. 
Well, I'm going to follow up a little bit because I suspect I'm not the only one. Uh, there are a lot of things I enjoy, and oftentimes I think some of the things I enjoy the most are distracting me from the things that are important. Can you talk about how we deal with that? The things that you enjoy the most cannot um, distract you uh, that much because they are part of what is important. Otherwise, you wouldn't enjoy it so much. But the thing is, you feel that maybe there is something better that you could do, but that does not necessarily mean it is what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to do what makes you happy in this earth. You are supposed to connect to the things that bring you joy. That is who you are. If you are someone that enjoys uh, numbers or enjoys sexuality even or things of that nature, something about that is, uh, is to be taught or to be learned or to be shared in your experience. So you, it's not that it's going to detract from another part of your life because you are doing other things as well. You cannot always do just one thing. So, but I don't understand how that could detract from something else if you're, if you're involved in it and actually doing it, unless you're thinking that because it's always on your mind, it's detracting from doing other things, but you are always doing other things, aren't you? even though that thought is still there. This is true. All right, let's see. I forget who's next in the queue. Um, Don. Hello, Emma. Good day. Good day. Um, I forgot what I was going to ask you. Oh, yes. Is it, no, I'm pleased to learn that you're a 14th dimensional uh, being. Um, could you tell me the species you, species you are of? Well, I don't know if it has a name at, in your realm because it wouldn't be able to be pronounced. But it is more of an energy. Uh, we are more energetic beings. We are not corporeal. We are more energy and more uh, just... If you could see us, it would be like seeing a small spark but the spark would continue to get, give off a little bit of light always and consistently. So, I, I, we are, um, my planet, there is a planet okay. that, that we are around because we have to have a home base of some sort. So it is not that we are floating out in the middle of space. We do live around a planet. Uh, it's Molioria. Uh, is the what the other dimensional creatures call it because we are not part of them but we are outside their dimension in another dimension that exists alongside of this species they are more like a third or fourth dimensional species like you and have more of the uh, connection to words and more of connection to space and time than we do so if that is an uh if that is helping you understand it does um i'm familiar somewhat with six dimensional beings as well and um i was wondering since many of us are interested in this numerology can you come down into our dreams at night and yes I will, re I will release it yes because I, I appreciate the uh, 15th dimensional truth of nothing travels faster than thought. It is true. We do, uh, we are telepathic, of course, but more than that, we're intrapathic, which means that we can become one another. Interesting. Thank you very much, I'm talking. Yes. Blessings. Your blessings will be returned. Okay. And that is what I speak of. When you give something good, it will be returned. Always. Although many may not find it right away, but it will be there. <laughs> Thank you. I believe Sheer is next. 
Yeah. Greetings, Amatok. How are you? I am well. I believe it's been a couple of years since I had the chance to speak with you. Absolutely. And I enjoy speaking to humans. And I'm glad to have this opportunity. Just to clarify, you say that you're from the 14th density? That's what you might call it. I do not call it that. Uh, I, I mean, it is not exactly accurate, but it is what it is. We see things much differently from here than you do. I see that you have to put a bookmark in the densities. But so that is what you have done. Whereas we do not have to do that. I see. Um, also, do you have uh, an hybridization program? Um, we do not. Uh, hmm. Our DNA is probably unable to be given to third dimension, but I will check that out. There is always a great deal of discovery and understanding happening with us. Interesting. Um, much blessings. Thank you. Much blessings. And if we are able to give our DNA, I will make sure that your father knows of it. Awesome. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. I think that catches us up with everything but the chats. Uh, we have a YouTube question from Iana Rios. What's the most effective non-direct way to change a base vibration? Non-direct way would be through prayer and through meditation. A most direct way would be through um, spiritual intervention, which means you are actually coming and confronting this negativity. That is the answer. Now, there are many different ways to pray about something like this. I, I'm taking it this is some a person that you're talking about. And if it's a person and you do not want to be interactive with them, you must send that energy via some other vehicle, such as prayer or, or meditation, or even through just a great, wonderful example or a wonderful energy of your own that they may sh look at and want to be a part of. But many times with negative uh, beings or negative base, they only see themselves and they are uh, folding, they are collapsing in on themselves constantly and creating greater and greater negativity. If that is the case, then it must be prayer or you must have a group intervene. Thank you. Uh, the next question in the queue is from Yad Daniel. He writes, I have many problems with the energy of Aries and Leo. Could you explain how to use those energies healthily? First of all, you have to develop an unconditional love for everyone. And if, if these ones bother you, then you must understand why. Is it something within you or is it something within them? I believe the answer lies within yourself. There is something that you dislike about the personalities that you are encountering. And sometimes that means that they are much like you. Sometimes we do not like to meet people like ourselves. We do not like to see that mirrored in other people. It is part of us and we are wanted to be unique and individual. So do an introspection on yourself first before you can make a judgment on anyone else. But let me understand this. I do not believe you're an unloving person. That is not what I'm saying. But I do believe you're miscalculating the gestures and actions and tendencies of these particular individuals. And I believe you need to look at yourself to see if you have any of these actions that actually bother you about them. I know some of you are going, ooh, 
it, but the thing is, it's very true. If you dislike someone, often they have something in them that's very much like yourself. Very much like yourself. And you'll say, no, never, never. But if you look carefully, do an introspection, be honest with yourself, you'll see that you are not the perfect person. No one is. And so, therefore, you must find unconditional love for them and a way to build a bridge to them that was not there before. Building bridges is hard work. But once they are built, burning them is very easy. Mm. All right. We have three questions in the queue, and I've just been reminded we're running low on time. So I think after those three, we'll stop and take blessings. Michelle, you're next. I'm going to talk. I was curious to know if when we are processing, when we're um, working with, say, past life stuff and we want to clear the negative energy out of ourselves or we have something like even if I only know that I have blocks in one of my chakras and I sit down and I meditate and I sense myself healing or whatever, how do we know when it's complete or what is a good way for a human to gauge when it is complete or is it just going to be different for everybody? Et It'll be different for everyone, but let me tell you about yourself. Okay. Whenever you stop this healing process and move forward, you will know if it's still there or not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're very, very intuitive about your your body and about the things around your body. So mm -hmm. you're very intuitive about that. So you will absolutely know within 24 hours if it's gone or not. Okay. Many of you will also be the same. You're aware of what's around you, what's going on with you, and if there is something wrong, you know it. And if you don't know it, uh, and... I'm, I'm saying this to you now, get to know it. Is there something wrong with me? Question it. Because, it, but find all the right things in you as well. I'm not saying just find the wrong things, but I'm saying to lift yourself up with the right things. And then you, the wrong things, I don't like the word wrong. Let's not use that word. The things that are not with you that, you, you want to carry on with you, the things you don't want to carry on with you, then you can release them. Because really, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> it is that you no longer want to entertain within yourself. And right. things that no longer build you up, no longer edify the, the person but things that are just unnecessary. So just let those things go. Thank you. Next. Uh, Marlene yes. is next. Greetings, I want to talk. Yes, it's Marlene. I, um, I just want to know uh, if and when and where we were the last time that uh, we spoke. Um, the last time we spoke in the flesh together? Well, yes, and upstairs. Yeah, we spoke in the flesh about 250 years ago, 252 years ago, and that was in uh, the, the uh, nebula. One moment, I'm trying to see the planet. It was, a, it was a blue world like this one. There was water, there was air. But we were not third dimensional together. We were actually fifth dimensional beings. It was quite a quite an interesting conversation. We knew each other actually pretty well on that world. Hmm. Thank you. And recently upstairs? I'm not sure exactly what you are referring to. Can you be more specific? Well, on... Um... Traveling around in ships and... Oh, yes. Yes, we have spoken a few times around the ships, of course. Um, there is a dilemma with some of them that you and I are working out. Thank you. This is... A, you. Yes, you extended my thought. 
Thank you yeah, so much. Exactly. <laughs> Thank and you. That's the truth. We are working on helping some of these ships. There is a dilemma between a, a couple of them. Some, uh, but we are working that out in uh, very positive ways. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. And David, if you're ready to unmute, uh, you have the honor of the last question. Hello, hello. Good to meet you. Greetings. So uh, you were talking about unconditional love, and it brought up um, some thoughts and questions about guidance on how to be unconditional love when things happen that bring you deep sadness and, and great anger uh, to a high high extent when, when it's the incidents that happen that are so huge that it just completely surrounds you for long periods of time. All right. First of all, you have to work on yourself before you can have unconditional love. You must find these places of anger, find these places that are not meant to be within you and deal with them and work them out before you can ever try to deal with unconditional love. You must love yourself first. And if there is a lot of anger and a lot of sorrow, then you need to do some work on yourself or find someone that can help you with that because you need to cleanse out. Cleansing is something that you, that you if you're feeling great anger and great sorrow, this is something that needs cleansed and healed. You need a great healing about this. And this is not an easy healing because there is a lot of pain that goes along with this. And I don't want to talk about that. I do want to talk about healing of the psyche, healing of the body, healing of the spirit, healing all through you. I want you, in order for this to be effective and find unconditional light, you have to be a happy person. You have to be happy with yourself. You have to, be, have to be happy with your surroundings in some ways. And you have to be know that you are truly moving in the right direction uh, psychically. In, in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, you will know. You will feel that joy. You will not always have. Everyone has times of sorrow and sadness. And they have times when family members pass or something of this nature. But you will know in yourself there's an internal joy that just doesn't go away. There's an internal self-awareness that doesn't say anything negative. It's all positively oriented. You must find that healing. You must let that heal. Let that become a beautiful ray of light within you. I see within you there's a lot of... Um, of things going on and I know that you can do something about it and you have done many things to help it but the one thing you have to do is forgive and forgiveness is very hard forgiveness is very hard but necessary but you know what after you forgive you become light as a feather Forgive yourself and forgive others for these pains that they've put on you or you have experienced because it has to be that way in order for you to be well. You must be well, and the only way to do it is cleansing. And forgiveness is a way of cleansing. Forgiveness is a way of bringing the, the mind, body, and spirit into a different realm of understanding. And you must also know that even if they were trying to hurt you or trying to be negative, you must love them anyway because they have a portion of God's soul within them. And that is what you look for. You look for the God in them. You don't look for the negative in them. You look for the positive in them. Forgive them, lift them up, say something nice to them. Be the person that is stronger. Be the person that is wiser. Build the bridge. 
start building the bridge because if they're not going to build it, you are going to have to build it. Does that make sense to you? That oh, yes. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. And guess what? It's the realization that this is all part of who you are and you let it become part of who you are. That let that go in and make a big realization that it doesn't have to be a part of you anymore. It doesn't have to stay in your heart. It doesn't have to stay in your being. What what doesn't have to stay? To be it doesn't have to stay in you. No, forget what, what you, that. Release it. Oh, you're talking about anger. That doesn't. Oh yes. You're one that hits anger rather quickly. Uh, yeah. Very quickly. And that is something you need to deal with. Yeah. Much love to you. And see, I love you unconditionally because I know that you are a beautiful individual. You have a big heart. You have a great understanding. But yet, you are, you are just a human being and flawed like everyone else. But bring that, bring that negativity out and, and get rid of it any way you can. Much love to you. Thank you. Much love. Yes. And it's, it's how do I say, Amatak? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Much love to you. Thank you. It is time for me to go. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I want to relay many appreciations from the chats for the wisdom you've shared with us today. And I'm wondering if you'd like to share a final blessing before you leave us. Yes, I would. And I'm going to share it in your language. I bring to you my heart. For it is the only part of me that is tangible in your world. I bring to you my love, for it is my heart that is tangible to your world. Let that be a part of you as all hearts in the universe unite in some way, in some place. Let the light between us always shine and let the goodness always be there. Do never let it go. Find a way to lift up and lift up those around you. For you are a light and your heart is as strong as any with love. If your love can come through with any other individual or any other being whatsoever, you have succeeded in bonding with that person or that being. Bond with as many in the world as you can, for the bond strengthens not only them, but you. And the bond lifts up those that are down here. It brings them to a higher place. Your bonds that are true will never be divided and will continue to be strong throughout all eternity, no matter what universe you are in, no matter what time frame you experience you are of the eternal love that god has created for all amen much love thank you so much
Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wow, we're well over time. <laughs> well, we got off to a bit of a late start, so we're, we're about two hours in. Um, uh, final blessings in the room? Anybody want to do a final blessing? Everybody, okay. I have two of them in this room. Anybody out there? Me. Who is that? Who said me? Michelle. Oh, Michelle. Good. All right, Barbara, you go first, I guess. Unless you went are directing in a different direction, Mark. No, Barbara's standing up. Let's let's go with it. All right. <laughs> All right. The words that have been spoken here today have touched us deeply, and we see that there is much hope for your race. We are willing to help you and send our energy to you. So add another species to those that are helping the human race at this time. We are not in love with you, but we will learn to love you, I am sure. Wow, do you know what species that was, Jim? I do not. Do you? I do not. Okay. I was not paying attention. All right. Who's next? <laughs> Angie, or wait, did you were you in the queue? I was gonna. Uh, I want to uh, bring up the uh, bring up the end. Okay. okay, Michelle. Hi, I'm gonna try to love you guys too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was a great <laughs> oh, that was great. Mm, okay, let's see what's coming. The fabric of the universe is made of song and energy and all kinds of things that interact one with another and bring up the spirits of all those in eternity. We are here to just bring up all of you in this time of gathering and fellowship. Be one to another, happy and enlightened. Do you know who that was? That was an angel, I believe, or a Hathor, maybe. Okay. It was a Hathor, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. We will bring forth our greatest gifts to you when we are part of your society. We have been with you many times and have many writings on your planet that have not yet been deciphered. So we here are anxious to get to know you even better, although in the ancient past we knew you well. Much blessings and much love. Move forward and be well. That was definitely Naga. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim. And I hope everybody you, had a good session today. It was awesome.
And just a reminder from the announcements to have people let Jim know if they're interested in the Galactic Healing class, April yeah. or May. Yes, please let me know. Send a note to Jim Reiki, R-E-I-K-I, at gmail.com. If you are interested in the Galactic Energy class, the spirals and non-spirals, Takur will be there to teach them. But I do need to know how much interest there is because if there's a lot of interest, which I hope there is, then it'll be a less expensive class. So hopefully a lot of you will uh, respond. Otherwise, it might be a little more expensive. I try to make it as inexpensive as possible. Oh, All right. Workshop, yes. <clears throat> the, workshop, uh, the 8th through the 12th of August. It's going to be awesome, people. So uh, we already have how many people interested? About eight? Yes. Eight, nine, eight or nine people that are already interested. Yeah. Some of them have already paid. and and But we have some... Uh, a lot of people from outside the country this time, which is really awesome. I appreciate that. Thanks. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody in the room and online and in the YouTube chats for participating today. And to those of us who are catching us on the replay, thank you for watching Cucolo TV. Have a wonderful day. Y'all come back now here. <laughs> <laughs>